Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to City of Confidence TV. This time we have a very special guest from France, an outstanding entrepreneur called Olivier Roland, who will tell you everything about his new book. Let's check it out. En fait, Donc là, là, on est pour en interview. De quoi Là, on est, en, on est en interview ou pas Ouais. Ah bon, mais, mais j'ai pas compris, mais il faut m'expliquer. <rire> Alors du coup, ok, mais tu m'as pas présenté. Ah, tu vas faire l'intro avant, c'est ça Non, c'est en fait, non, c'est très drôle. C'est pas... Maybe we, we both have a French accent, so it's even better. I hope I don't have one. <laughs> okay. Maybe you have a Japanese accent. <laughs> Probably, yes. <laughs> well, no, actually, I would like to actually ask you a couple questions, maybe related to, to also your career, but based on the theme that um, what my specialty is. And I actually had asked you something, a couple of questions last time I saw you. But if you can answer to the question relating it to the book, it would be great. Okay, no okay? problem. Perfect. So as you know, uh, thanks partially actually, thanks to you, uh, who actually gave me the déclic of uh, living my dream. Mm -hmm. You remember we met uh, for the first time, I think that was six years ago, was it? Five, in 2017, six years? I think, in, in Thailand, in Phuket. Yes, yes, yes. And I was, uh, actually, I remember, like, uh, it was uh, yesterday, uh, one of the first event, uh, motivational uh, kind of event that um, I was hosting and uh, happened to meet you there for the first time. And uh, you were so, I would say, free spirit, but much bigger free spirits than I've ever met in any kind of French section. Really? Okay. Yes, I think so. Interesting. Um, it's, uh, it's nice to see because, you know, you know, usually French people have a reputation, right? You have the reputation of a flirtatious. You have the I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> of course not. Of Can you course stop not. spreading fake news, please? <laughs> No, but French men in general, and I'm well placed to talk about it as being French myself, but you have the reputation of kind of being, you know, very showman, a lot of blah, blah, a lot of, a lot of um, you know, kind of on the spot. But what I actually really appreciated uh, from you at that time is actually you gave me the input of just, uh, why don't you just say what comes up to your mind, but in a more structured way? I don't know if you recall that. And uh, the fact that you actually uh, were living in a way, as you said, living your dream. Um, I'd like to know, like, in which, which structure did you base your life on after basically you quit your um, studies or became entrepreneur? What was your basic um, kind of keyword for you to own your mm -hmm. confidence to do what you do today? Wow, it's very, very, very interesting question. So I dropped school at 18. I don't even have the basic uh, diploma of the French school system called the BAC. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even have it. And uh, I, I worked to, to work for one year on my project of creating my business. Mm -hmm. And it seems, it can seem very bold, even like uh, crazy. But actually, um, the, the key word at this time was experiment and moving forward. Okay. Uh, so what does it mean? I was very unhappy in, in school, you know, very, very unhappy, very bored. Uh, mm. I was actually uh, the, the, the director of my school, uh, summoned me and told me, you know, Olivier, you are so unmotivated that you are uh, demotivating the teachers. When some teachers, they don't want to go to the classroom when you are there. So imagine, because, and Right now, I'm, now I, with, uh, you know, all the time, I understand why, because I was like this on the table, you know, I was sleeping seriously. And a few months later, I was completely different. I was unstoppable. I was, I, I was seeing a, a mountain. I was just going through it and making a hole into it, you know, like Tex Avery. So, yeah. 
And what happened between the Olivier that was so unmotivated that he, he was uh, demotivating the teachers and the Olivier that was unstoppable? Well, I just found a project that really, really uh, motivated me and that I couldn't uh, afford to, to, to not succeed, succeed, you know, which mm -hmm. was to create my company. I, I, I was very shy when I was young. I couldn't talk to girls. And I was in a, a, a literature classroom with uh, 28 girls and four guys. So, wow. yeah. And like a lot of people like, like these, I, 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 I went really deeply into the computer world mm -hmm. because it's a fascinating world where you can do a lot of stuff and that doesn't require a lot of human interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was not completely asocial. I, I had a few friends. And one of my friends was also very good with computers. And we realized that uh, we were solving the problems of others like these. Problems that like people thought were super hard for us, it was super easy. Mm -hmm. And we were like, hey, how can we make money with that? And we just did like a, 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 a small, we put a small ad in a local newspaper for like 10 euros, like which is more or less $10, you know? Mm -hmm. And in one month, we got like 1,000 euros of sales. Oh my God. And what was like, what were you selling? Uh, it was like just we are going to the home of people to repair their computer problem. That's it, you know, very simple. And uh, at the time I was 18, I was making maybe I had like 10 euros per week of pocket money, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, 40 to 40 euros a month. And then boom, 1000 euros in one month while I'm still in school, you know, just like going part time during the weekend and the evenings. And <clears throat> that's what gave me the confidence to say okay this is this really works people are actually paying me i have the skill to help them and so i can create a business uh, with this idea so as you can see it's not so crazy when you did an experiment that proved mm. that your idea is right so uh, i was looking for any way to escape the system i yes. do have a question though so yeah. i mean it's actually a good point what you mentioned so a lot of people may have the idea on how to help others, right? But how do you actually give yourself enough confidence or being convinced that the, your idea is good enough to even post it somewhere? Well, the thing is, there is no guarantee. Sure. So that's why you want to try to test your idea the fastest possible, but mm -hmm. really on the field, in reality. It mm -hmm. doesn't, it's, it's not good for anyone to, for you to like uh, refine the idea for one year in your bedroom. It doesn't, it's not good because you're not in contact with reality. And what you want is to try. And, you know, there is a whole movement in the entrepreneurial world uh, about this. It's called the Lean Startup, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I, I was doing Lean Startup like uh, eight years before the book was released, you know, I was like Monsieur Jourdain in Molière uh, doing prose uh, without, do, without knowing it, you know, and the idea is very simple. Okay, I have this idea. What mm -hmm. is the minimum viable product I can put out in the market? Mm -hmm. So what, what does it mean? It means what is the experiment I can do that mm -hmm. will so, that will uh, where we will be very sure uh, mm -hmm. if it works or not, but with a minimum uh, investment of time, resources and money. Uh, so this was an example. Okay, oh, maybe we can make money by repairing computers. How can we try it? Oh, let's just put an, a, a, an ad in the newspaper and see how it goes, you know? Okay. Um, instead of working uh, one year on your company project and you only see if it works after you ask for lunch, you took a, an office, you bought a car and this kind of stuff, you know? So I have another question. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to dig into a little... Um, so from the moment you found your idea and you decided to put into action, a lot of people can, you know, want to do that, but there's a couple, um, things that I encounter, um, also with, um, different of my students that told me, um, I mean, for instance, you just gave me the example, you were completely demotivated and then you just switched on. So what, what changed you? And if it's a person, maybe, who is that person? Well, yeah, there is a person who changed me. It's me. Oh, that's <laughs> Actually, I, and I love to share this story because it, I want to, to, to tell all the people who are unmotivated or feel frustrated in their life that it's not like the end of the world. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's fine to be like this from time to time in your life. Yeah. And it can be a strength because it gives you a lot of motivation to find a solution. 
-hmm. you know? And basically, yeah, I was bored. Why? Because I didn't have any project. I didn't have any mission. I didn't have any uh, thing that was really exciting me. I was bored in school because I, I didn't know why I was learning everything they tried to teach me, you know. And I love to learn, you know. That's that's what mm -hmm. is so ironic. Mm -hmm. um, but um, when I found this project that was, I, I was so motivated. I was like, yeah, maybe I can create a company and be my own boss and just quit, uh, leave the school system and, and create my own adventure in life, you know. I was so motivated to do it. It gave me the sacred fire. The sacred fire, and you know, it's uh, it's not even a transformation. It's like it just it it revealed me to myself, you know. Uh, it, it, it I saw that I had the, all the resources needed to do this, and it gave me a lot of confidence um, mm. afterwards. Uh, and I understood, and it's very it's like a key point because a lot of people dream of creating their company, for example, or doing something else, you know, like uh, uh, doing a world tour or any, anything that they, they want to do, but it's, it's a bit bold. And uh, most people, they wait for the perfect moment, yeah. the perfect moment, which of course never happened. Uh, they wait for uh, to have the perfect skill or the, the right combination. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you there is no right moment, right motivation. At some point, you create the right moment by, by doing it. And I mean, when I was uh, 19, when I created my company, I, I mean, I didn't know anything about life. Uh, I didn't have a diploma. I didn't have a network. I, did, I, I had just a few customers. I, was, uh, I didn't know how to wear clothes <laughs> in a fashion way. You know, I was like, I had big glasses like these. I had the, what do you say, like bouton uh, sprinkler, you know, like acne. I mean, come on. I was the worst possible guy to create a company, but I still did it. And uh, it worked. So if now you are in better situation than me at the time, you have better, better resources to, to do what you want to do. I have another question and I'm going to kind of take example on the uh, Japanese kind of mindset that I encounter very often. Um, a lot of people, you know, as, as you know, I myself lived in a um, Japanese system. And even though a lot of now Japanese entrepreneurs are very successful, the way that I got raised very often at school was when I wanted to do something or when I had a new idea, always my surrounding naturally, and that is cultural, unfortunately, it's changing bit by bit, but cultural, um, just your, your surrounding as soon as you come up with a new idea or new concept of course you want to tell about it to your friends or to your family what do you think i want to create this they always tell you no you can't always and hmm. i think that it always you know it also happens obviously um i mean in japan but i think this also happens around the world and i think a lot of people get demotivated when they're close friends you know when they when you get a new idea a new concept motivated you want to talk about it to your surrounding to your family to your friends because you're excited right but a lot of people just get nah forget about it it's not going to work and i don't know if you got that that's my first question. Did you get people telling you, no, you can't? And my second thing is, if they did tell you, did you keep pushing it? And in this case, how did you manage to, besides if even if you had other people telling you no, if that was the case? Great questions. So yeah, it's very common for entrepreneurs to encounter this kind of uh, you know resistance. Yeah. Uh, most entrepreneurs feel, feel actually a bit lonely because most of their family and friends uh, are not entrepreneurs themselves. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, you have a different way to, to fight against this. First, you can try to connect with other entrepreneurs. So mm -hmm. I don't know in Japan, but I mean, in most countries, you have like associations, clubs, uh, a network of things that are designed to help entrepreneurs overcome mm -hmm. the, their, you know, solitary uh, feeling and this kind mm -hmm. of stuff, and also help them with uh, ideas, uh, support. So it's important to join this kind of network, very important. Uh, because there, they will not tell you it's wrong, yeah. okay? It, they will maybe challenge you on some things, but they try to help achieve that. Mm -hmm. And second, yeah, it happened to me. Uh, uh, and But, you know, I, the, the time we spent between having the idea of making money with a computer, and it was just my first business. I, I can talk about the other businesses if you want. And, and the time we, uh, we took to, to test it was less than one week. So basically, we, we didn't even have time to share the idea. We were already testing on the field. And then the, the okay, results spoke, spoke for themselves. Mm -hmm. So the other guys, they could say, oh, no, it's not going to work. We were, we were saying, well, sorry, it's working. 
<laughs> we are making money. Next question. <laughs> so, you know, at some point, the best way to know is mm. to uh, experiment. And I think it's very important to have this scientific mindset, you know, and yeah. to see any business idea or project idea as an experiment. So mm. it doesn't matter if people say, uh, really, it doesn't matter really, if people say, oh, it's not going to work. You, you, you will say, maybe, maybe not. There is only one way to know. It's to try it. That's it, you know? Okay. And so, I mean, that's maybe people have told you, but out of, let's say, okay, out of all the projects you've done, I don't know if it's 10, 20, 100, uh, how many worked and how many didn't? Well, that's a good question because, you know, the brain is very, very good at trying to uh, forget <laughs> the project that didn't work. <laughs> so uh, I, I cannot say how many projects I tried in my life, you know. Uh, <clears throat> well, my first company obviously worked. Uh, I, I tried at some point I had a goal of being a science fiction author, uh, wow. but I didn't pursue it. Uh, with enough energy to do it even though I was published like a short story I had a short story published in a in a book uh, but yeah I was more focusing on my entrepreneurial career meaning I procrastinated a lot of this goal uh, but yeah I mean overall I'm very happy with the with the with the results I got you know mm -hmm. after the first the first company was an amazing adventure for the five first years mm -hmm. uh, but I realized something uh, really uh, scary after like, yeah, five years. Mm -hmm. um, I realized that this company I created to be free was actually a gel I built for myself. Okay. Because like most entrepreneurs, I was working 60, 70 hours a week. You mm. know? And uh, I, I was like, I was 24 and I was like, ha, ah, now, you know, it was awesome to build this company. I had a secret fire inside me. I didn't care if I worked a, a lot of time. But now I want a bit more balance between my personal and my professional life. And I was like, hey, I cannot do it because uh, my company is my only source of income. I don't see how I can lower the time I'm in without, you know, um, making the company less profitable. Mm -hmm. I cannot see how to delegate efficiently. I cannot see how to sell it. Uh, I cannot... As, as a, um, uh, an entrepreneur in France, I didn't have any unemployment benefit and this kind of thing. So I couldn't, if I would have stopped the company, I wouldn't have any income. And I was like, huh, what, what the hell? I want to, to work less and I cannot do it. Uh, and I, I, I look for solutions for years. And finally, I, you know, I, I found different processes. And I, I had the second goal of creating a company that was in service of my life instead of my life being in service of my business. And I did it in uh, 2010. And uh, now that's, I'm so proud of this, you know, it's, it was my project. And now I have a company that allows me to travel six months a year to, to inspire hundreds of thousands of people. And that uh, maybe I, I work 25 hours a week, you know, so it's pretty, pretty good. Uh, yeah. And also I had the, the goal of writing your book and making it a bestseller. And I mean, the book sold 100,000 copies in French which is in French is really good. In French is really good. Maybe in some other countries it's not so good, but in France is great. It's fantastic. <laughs> so what, I mean, we can go on. I mean, I could have like millions of questions for you, but what motivates you in life right now? That's really great question. Uh, so I think I really believe in cycles. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, cycles are a great way to reconcile some opposing uh, views about happiness. If mm -hmm. you look at the, what the Buddhists say, uh, basically they say, hey, uh, the, source, the source of suffering in human beings is because they always want more. They are not satisfied with what they have. So we need to learn to be more grateful for, for what yeah. we have and we'll be more happy. And I think, of course, it's true. But also in personal development, you know, the personal development field, it's more like, yeah, but you know, uh, happiness is not about reaching a goal. It's, it's about moving forward to a goal. Mm. It's about uh, improving yourself. And I, I think it's true too. So how do you, re because moving forward, wanting more, you know, it's like, so how do you reconcile the two? You know, I think actually the, the, the two are true, uh, but in different cycles of your life. So I try to uh, move from a cycle where I'm grateful for what I have. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to reap the benefits of what I, I, I put before and cycles when I, where I want to grow. 
you know. And uh, at the end of last year, I was a bit a bit depressed. Uh, I was not really depressed, but maybe it was the closest thing to depression I could have, you know. And I was like, ah, okay, same thing that in 2012, you know. Okay, uh, I have all these amazing results. What, what is the next goal, you know? And I, I talked to a few friends and I decided to do a 10x, meaning I, I will multiply by 10 the income of the company in five years uh, wow. without killing myself, without killing the team, uh, mm -hmm. with still keeping the lifestyle and stuff. Um, and I think it's a great way to, to yeah, to have a, an interesting goal. So now I'm in cycle of uh, progressing, you know, in, in business. And I, I'm always in a cycle of progressing for myself, you know, but the priorities are different. Uh, so that, that's my goal right now. I want to make uh, the way of the intelligent rebel so the English version of the book, uh, a bestseller in English too, which is not, uh, it's, it's harder because my audience in English is, uh, is way smaller than in French. Uh, and yeah, I, I want to find the, you know, I just want to continue to grow and uh, help people and uh, have a, a, an amazing life. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's. I think it's empowering also to to learn from people and maybe to learn different things or simply having feedback from people that have followed you, that have read your book, and that just simply come to you and say, "Oh my God, thanks to your advice, I managed to change my life like this." I think it's a no, it's, um, it's one awesome. of the most um, motivating thing that you can you can hear and you can live also. Um, Maybe to, to have an idea and to kind of um, close this, at least this live, um, can, you, can you let me know or can you share uh, what is the most uh, pleasant and uh, happy comment you recently received that moved you? That's good. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm blessed because uh, I receive uh, this kind of comments quite often. Also, some haters, uh, don't, don't get me wrong, everyone uh, on the internet has haters. Uh, uh, but haters, but uh, I never met any hater in my life. Uh, so yeah, well, just like uh, yesterday, I met someone from my audience and she said that uh, I, I really inspired her to uh, start her business. And, you know, she was uh, an employee uh, in a high uh, a luxury brand in France mm -hmm. and she was not so happy. And now she, she has her own agency and she wants to, to grow. And a few days wow. before, I also met another people from my audience. I'm in Paris right now. So, you know, uh, I have a lot of people following me here. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, she said, uh, and she was, she's 23 and she already has, the, 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 the woman I met like a few days before, she's 23 and she has like a, uh, already a business that makes her like uh, 2,000 euros a month and she's still a student and it's crazy. And she, she was inspired because she saw one of my videos a few years uh, ago. So, you know, that's the kind of thing. I, I just love to see people uh, of course, I'm not the only reason, but I love to like maybe you know uh, to be the just the little uh, how do you say in English like uh, you know uh, yeah. uh, win the the small win on a, on a number mm -hmm. so I can help embers to blossom and to transform into into a, a fire. So I love I love to see that sometimes I'm this kind of small win that happens at the right time for 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 the embers uh, instead of uh, them being uh, uh, wet by the wind, you know. So yeah, it's, it's always awesome. Awesome. Okay. And um, I mean, from maybe if you have a message to, if you have a message to people that may be going through struggle right now, mm -hmm. um, that are, that try to have motivation every day, that they're not demotivated necessarily all the time. But as you said, mm -hmm. right, everybody can have like up and down in their life. And if you have a message to tell them uh, to kind of have the little souffle, you know, the little boost um, in their current life. And also maybe that can also help for people that necessarily want to, I mean, that perhaps want to ideally have your life one day and that they just don't know where to start. What kind of message would you give them? Well, yeah, first, you know, it's completely normal to feel that way. Don't feel bad about it. I know it's not easy because you're like, you want to achieve something and you feel like, oh my God, I'm so unmotivated. Uh, as I said, it's, it doesn't say anything about you, mm. really. I was like this and now, uh, yeah, I have a successful company and my life is awesome, you know? So you just, it's okay. And you just need to find, you just, you know, you just need to find a project, ideally, that 
uh, really, really, really motivate you. Like you're like, it's one of, it's your dream, you know, mm -hmm. and that push you, that, that really challenge you, that uh, you know that if you don't give everything, you're, you're going to fail, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not a, a big fan of the school of thought of saying you need to burn your ships, you know, uh, and you just have two options, dying or succeeding. Because as I said, no, I'm always doing a small experiment to mm -hmm. see if my ideas are good or not. And then I move forward, you know. But uh, also you want to have this kind of challenge that you know that you need, yeah, you need to give everything, but in a smart way, like doing experiment, uh, meeting people that can help you and this kind of stuff, you know. So... Um, just, you know, put your brain into search mode. It can take a while. It can take months, sometimes years. Just put your brain in search mode for this kind of project. Try mm -hmm. to think, try to meet people uh, who, who achieve what you want to achieve. That's also a great way. Um, and, you know, just move forward. Um, that's, that's the key. Awesome. Well, merci beaucoup, Olivier. Merci à toi, Clara. Uh, it's been a while that we, I've been wanting to catch up with you after years, I must say. <laughs> but it's really nice to see, uh, well, first of all, to see you happy. I think that your happiness have uh, uh, changed in a different way after four years. I think you feel uh, more, uh, how do you say in French, épanoui, like more. Oh, thank you. Okay, yeah. more, um, more uh, I think you, you're more peaceful with yourself. Um, I think that peace can be also found in, in a balance of life, right? As I'm sure you, you told me one of the first thing that you actually told me when you met me, or when I met you actually, is um, the most important thing for me is to feel free, is mm -hmm. to feel like I'm actually... Uh, as you said, right, not working in life, but basically enjoying life first and working in order to enjoy life. So I think that this is a very French philosophy, in my personal opinion, and uh, you really took it to a next level. So thank you. It's really nice to catch up and uh, hopefully we'll do a next one soon after you come back from your multiple trips of summer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, with pleasure. Absolutely. Yeah. So when, where is your next destination? I'm going to Dominican Republic in a few days, then uh, Panama, right. then Cancun. Then I will see maybe Africa. Wow. That's crazy. For how long? How many months? Uh, I think, you know, so right now we are in July and, you know, I live in Dubai. So basically the summer is horrible there because the weather is so hot. Yeah. Uh, but so I try to not be in Dubai from June to September. So maybe I will come back in, at the end of September. I will see. And how come you're in Paris now then? Well, sometimes I'm in Paris, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's like, I always have things to do in Paris. So people to see, you know, and of course I have family and friends in France. So, yeah. So as a, uh, to end this, why don't you share with me like a nice episode, nice surprise that you had a nice evening you had for the 14th of July. Yes, so right now we're, we are the 15th of July and the, the previous day yesterday is actually the national uh, holiday of France. It's like the celebration of the Bastille, uh, called it a conquering. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's the start of the French Revolution. So it's like yeah. a big deal here, you know, and I, and I was in Paris and I was invited to a party. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, okay, oh, I need to, to do the, the interview with Clara tomorrow. So I'm going to be nice. You know, I'm going to leave early. And I came back to at home at 4 a.m. <laughs> and I sent you a message that I thought was clear, but it was not clear at all. And basically, here I am. We, we started one hour late. So thank you, Clara, for this. <laughs> uh, and it, actually, it happens to me very rarely. I'm, I'm, I'm taking this kind of commitment very seriously, you know. So... Sorry again for this and uh, it's <laughs> les aléas de la vie. It's and les aléas yeah. Allé de la vie, absolutely. Yeah, but it's, it's super nice to to catch up. It's uh, really nice to also hear about the book, and uh, hopefully, I'm actually looking forward to uh, see the Japanese version one day. Well, let's see if it sells yeah. well in English. It's going to be translated in other languages for sure. Nice, awesome. Well, merci beaucoup, Olivier. My publisher is already talking with a, with a Korean publisher. Yes, merci. <laughs> nice, nice. Olivier Roland, à très bientôt.
mon cher ami. Et ça m'a fait super plaisir de, de faire ce live avec toi. J'espère que tu as pris. Merci à toi. J'en ai pris. Euh, toi, il y a une magnifique couverture ici. Tu la vois à l'endroit, hein, toi Oui. Ouais. Exact. Euh, et donc, le livre, en fait, c'est euh, un. Je l'écris comme un guide pour les gens que j'appelle les rebelles intelligents. Et donc, euh, les... qu'est-ce que c'est un rebelle intelligent C'est mm -hmm. quelqu'un qui peut. Avoir tous les signes de succès, tu vois, belle voiture, mmh. belle maison, bon, bon travail dans une belle entreprise, euh, une famille, euh, un, un conjoint, etc., incroyable. Mais <coughs> quand même, au fond de lui, il ressent une petite voix euh, mmh. qui lui dit que ce n'est pas comme ça qu'il va s'épanouir, ce n'est pas mmh. comme ça qu'il va devenir la meilleure version de lui-même ou d'elle-même. <coughs> Et euh, généralement, en fait, euh, cette, euh, cet épanouissement, ça passe par la création. Donc, ça peut être la création artistique, ouais, écrire ouais. un livre, écrire je sais pas moi, une pièce de théâtre. Ça mm -hmm. peut être la création d'une aventure, comme faire le tour du monde euh, pendant un an. Ça peut être la création d'une entreprise. En tous les cas, c'est la création de sa propre aventure dans la vie. Tu vois, c'est vraiment ouais. tracer son propre chemin. Mm -hmm. um, et j'ai vraiment voulu écrire ce livre pour être un guide pour ces personnes-là. Donc, il y a trois grandes parties. La première partie, c'est une critique du système éducatif euh, occidental. Alors, du coup, pour le Japon, je ne sais pas comment ça marche, hein, je t'avoue. Mm -hmm. euh, mais quand tu regardes comment le, la, la jeunesse du système éducatif dans quasiment mmh. tous les pays occidentaux, ça a été fait à la fin du 19e siècle en général, mmh. euh, avec pour but de faire en sorte que les citoyens euh, de l'époque soient mmh. euh, des gens productifs dans une société industrielle. Donc, okay. ça voulait dire quoi euh, ben, On voulait des bons employés, des bons ouvriers d'usine, des bons mmh. soldats. Mmh. Hein. Euh, donc, des gens qui étaient suffisamment éduqués pour être productifs là-dedans, mais pas, on ne voulait pas de gens qui étaient trop créatifs, qui pensaient ouais. trop en dehors des clous, qui ne respectaient pas l'autorité, euh, parce qu'à l'époque, ça ne rigolait pas. Hein. Il y avait beaucoup de révolutions. Il y avait eu la guerre civile américaine il n'y a pas si longtemps. Il y avait eu la commune de Paris. Euh, il y avait eu pas mal de trucs. Donc, à l'époque, les, les gens, les rebelles, ils prenaient le fusil et ils mm -hmm. essayaient de faire des révolutions marxistes. Donc, les gouvernements n'étaient pas très chauds, comme tu peux l'imaginer. Euh, et donc, en fait, tu as cette philosophie et dans, dans le. Euh, le, le système économique aussi, hein, la manière dont, dont, les, dont comment dire, le travail est organisé. Donc, tu avais toute cette philosophie qui fait que le système n'est pas conçu pour mmh. justement les rebelles, les aventuriers, les iconoclastes et tout ça. D'ailleurs, ouais. tu peux voir pas mal de parallèles entre la manière dont l'école est organisée et l'usine est organisée avec ouais. des élèves qui sont alignés en rang d'oignon. Euh, Jusqu'à il n'y a, a pas longtemps, dans beaucoup de pays, ils étaient en uniforme. Hein. En France, c'était jusque dans les années 70. En Grande-Bretagne, ils sont encore en uniforme. Euh, tu vois, donc il y a voilà, des parallèles avec l'usine, la, la, l'armée, <coughs> le, la sonnerie qui sonne toutes les heures, etc. etc. Donc la première partie, c'est une critique du système éducatif. Je montre un peu euh, les, les problèmes. Je montre aussi que ce n'est pas un système qui est conçu pour les rebelles intelligents. Mmh. Euh, et tu vois, c'est aussi un message pour dire si vous ne vous sentez pas intégré, non seulement au système éducatif, mais aussi au système économique, mmh. ce n'est pas grave. En fait, c'est normal, c'est parce qu'il n'est pas conçu pour vous. Donc oui. c'est une force à condition de le réaliser et puis de euh, bien jouer vos cartes, tout simplement. Euh, et donc, la deuxième partie, c'est <coughs> comment s'éduquer tout au long de sa vie efficacement par mmh. soi-même. Et la troisième partie, c'est comment créer une entreprise qui est au service de sa vie. Donc, euh, donc voilà. Et qu'est-ce qui t'a inspiré, en fait, créer, euh, ce enfin, à écrire ce livre Écoute, j'étais euh, en 2012, j'avais atteint euh, vraiment… J'avais dépassé mes rêves les plus fous en fait. J'avais euh, une entreprise qui euh, vraiment marchait très bien, euh, qui était entièrement sur le web. Je voyageais six mois par an. Euh, je gagnais bien plus d'argent que je pouvais en dépenser. J'inspirais des milliers de personnes et je me suis dit, euh, ok, c'est cool, vraiment génial. Mais alors du coup, c'est quoi l'étape d'après, tu vois euh, Et euh, j'étais un peu inspiré par la pyramide de Maslow que je suppose que tu connais. Euh, et dans les deux derniers degrés, il y a la réalisation de soi et le fait d'apporter de la valeur au monde tout simplement. Et ça faisait longtemps que je voulais être auteur. Et euh, ben je me suis dit que euh, ce serait une bonne manière pour moi justement de me réaliser et mm -hmm. d'apporter de la valeur au monde en écrivant le guide que j'aurais aimé avoir, écrit, avoir eu quand j'ai arrêté l'école à 18 ans pour créer ma première boîte parce que j'ai fait tellement d'erreurs, si tu veux, euh, que voilà, si j'avais pu avoir un livre entre les mains, ça, ça aurait été celui-là. Et je me suis dit, je vais écrire mon chef-d'œuvre, tu vois. J'ai vraiment tout donné pour, euh, pour là, c'était une sorte de… Finalement, c'était plus une démarche artistique qu'autre chose. Oui. Alors après, le livre, il est loin d'être parfait, hein, mais j'ai vraiment tout donné. Pour, pour en faire un, une bonne… Enfin, euh, voilà, le, le, le livre que j'aurais aimé avoir. Et euh, tu vois, je, je, vois, je pense qu'il y a beaucoup de rebelles intelligents, ce sont des, euh, des braises euh, mm -hmm. qui attendent juste une petite brise pour euh, faire un grand feu, mais que toute, la vie, on les, toute leur vie, on les a mouillés. Enfin, Donc, j'espère que ce livre, ça sera la, la petite brise qui va les, les faire prendre. D'accord. You have been listening to the amazing and fun to talk to uh, Olivier Roland. 
can you briefly describe one more time who you are, Olivier? And then please, please describe us what is the crusty news about the new upcoming and currently bestseller book that you just came up with. Well, just to, to wrap things up, I love to say I'm a teacher of freedom. Mm. I, I really help people to be free math, math materially through uh, entrepreneurship, but also, also like uh, just putting in place a system so you can have a system that is in service of your life and also free in your mind, you know, how to get, how to not uh, fall into ad bad addictions, bad habits, uh, and also how to have an open mind so you can really experience life to the fullest, experience all the adventures that you would love to, to explore in life. So yeah, um, the, the book, I'm so happy because, you know, I was so frustrated. My, my book in French was doing very well, but I have so many friends who don't speak French at all. Mm. And I was so frustrated because they couldn't really uh, know what I was doing. And now, finally, yes! it's out there, the way of the intelligent rebel. And, you, you know, you can find it uh, basically anywhere uh, on all the Amazon shops in the world, including Japan uh, and on the Kindle, Audio, Audible and this kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm very excited That's about awesome. that. That's super exciting. So every one of you that have watched um, this video, I hope that if you are looking for your, I guess, inner freedom and also in general, how to simply just have the, the little flame that you have inside you kind of burn and just motivate your every single day, then why don't you try out, just open the first page or the last page and just read it bit by bit if you don't have time but it's definitely a way to go because freedom for french people like olivier and i are one of the most capital thing to just simply feel good in life and just keep moving forward so you should try it as well and uh for people who want to have a, a glimpse of the book they can go to the way of the and uh, nice. i will send them a free extract like the three principles to succeed in life begged by science Fantastic. That's exciting. That's a nice way to start. Well, merci beaucoup, Olivier. I merci hope you Clara. like it. I hope you will keep following both of us and uh, have a great day. And just don't forget, freedom is the key. Merci beaucoup, Olivier. À très vite. Ciao, ciao. So this is the end of the show of City of Confidence TV. Hope you liked it. And so, of course, we have this very special surprise. In order for you to get the very special book from Olivier Roland, but not just a book, this time Olivier Roland is actually proposing to give you and offer you a book that is with his signature in it. Super exciting, isn't it? So in order to get this book and to have a chance to get it, what I'd like to ask you is simply subscribe just right underneath up to City of Confidence TV channel, as well as answering one question that he will be asking you soon. So what is his topic? This is the question that he'll, he's asking. What is his main topic that he wants you to understand? For those who manage to answer this, it is a chance for you to win this very special prize and hope to see you soon. But before we go, let me introduce you the very special, amazing entrepreneurs that is coming after this show. And they are called Anthony and Mayura Deville. Stay tuned and see you soon on City of Confidence TV.